Cool. All right. Can you see this? Yes, I see it. Cool. So, I mean, very standard to get that, you know, prompt filled here. And what we, we can start doing, asking now is like to build a API service for an e-commerce website. I'm going to start with a very simple prompt and I'm going to show you how we even help with prompt enhancement. As we know, with like any AI tool, your prompts are the most important thing. How you structure them you have the whole thing about prompt engineering you know structuring your prompt giving detailed deep instruction for the model to be able to get the best results out there so we'll start by just typing very simple prompt so very simple create a backend service for an e-commerce website so the first way we help developers or our users to improve their prompt is by having autocomplete suggestions so it kind of predicts what is your use case and the more you build uh, with the specific within a specific project, the better these suggestions come. So I can just press tab and like you know have it all to fill it. And the other thing that we have is this prompt enhancement tool that is going to take our one sentence prompt and actually build a very detailed product specification instruction for our service for the for the model how to build it. So you can see how it goes into different details like what is the database, what are the type of endpoints that we want, you know, we very specific routes and endpoints that we need. For example, using caching, what type of database, and so on. So it, it actually got way more detailed. So that should produce way better results and way more accurate to what we actually want to get as an outcome. We start uh, generating now line zero. We're going to start thinking and analyzing your query, your prompt, how to build it. It's going to start explaining it and then starting setting up the actual um, project structure. So as I mentioned, we start with these open source API modules and line zero uses these open source modules and templates that we have as the initial kind of foundation of each project, right? So that's why I said, we're going to continue maintaining these open source modules, but we're going to use them within line zero to produce even better results. So that way we have a mixture of human written code, right? Plus stuff generated by AI. Very typical, you know, coding tool. You have your code editor here. You know, you can see the different changes. It explains it, you know, gives you a summary of the new things that it just implemented. The new endpoints as well. Uh, so in the future, we're going to have, you know, flowchart diagrams here within the chat as well. And then, for example, we can go to server TS, which was a file that's part of this initial basic template. And we can see what are the different changes that it added. So for example, here it added rate limits. Right. We can see the different packages that you added. So it's going to handle all the packages for you that you need as well while us is generating code. And we can see that, you know, it added the auth routes, it added like order schemas to validate your endpoints. And then, you know, you have your controllers with your business logic here, various middlewares, and then we can continue building within the same chat. But one thing that I've built within line zero, which I think is pretty important is of being able to create a new chat within the same project. And that way the context length is much shorter for a specific feature. So the idea here is that developers should be splitting feature uh, into separate chats, right? That way Linesor will produce much, much better results because I mean, right now we have just one, one message here, right? So it's not a, not a big problem, but you know, when we have like, let's say 20 messages in the same chat, the context length can become quite big and then line zero can produce not optimal results. So I wanted to have that new chat functionality here, which for example, we're going to start by asking uh, to add, let's say password reset functionality. But also kind of my question here is that, so what are, you know, the part of the code, which you ask, you know, line zero and what are the part of the code that you as a developer should actually code it yourself? Yeah. So, I mean, the idea here is that line zero should be able to get you literally from no lines to fully, fully working API service, right? With minimal additional coding from the developer side. Right now, you're not able yet to edit code within the code editor. This is coming very soon. It's like one of the things that I got as a feedback from the public beta, you know, we want to be able to modify those files within the browser. So it should be kind of a balance of it's more than 80% of your services written by line zero. And then you have the little extra 20% that you need written by yourself. You, you know, you can like connect it with GitHub and then continue building cursor or Windsor for these other tools and then come back. Right. So for example, we have this GitHub integration that has a two way synchronization between line zero and a repository in your GitHub account. So if we go ahead and just connect it. Line zero is actually going to replicate the same 
project with the commit history in your uh, GitHub account, and then you'll be able to, you know, clone that repository locally and continue building in VS Code or Cursor or WinSurf, make changes there, then Line Zero is going to synchronize them back and then you can continue building specific things for backend within Line Zero. Ideally, as much as we can should be kind of handed over to Line Zero, but then the little specific, you'll be able to connect it to GitHub and, and then start continue building. It's taking a bit of time because replicating the whole project. This is amazing because if it saves, you know, 80% of the work for the developers, you know, then they can just spend, you know, building more things. So the whole idea of the tools that I'm building with Vratix, you know, with the tagline that I have for Vratix as a company is a developer efficiency company, right? We want to make developers much more efficient, free up time for innovation and actually focusing on the important bits when you build a product, right? like with these repetitive tasks and, you know, doing things that slow you down. The idea here is going from a five week development cycle to less than a day, let's say, right? To get your service, get it out there and actually push it and, and start building stuff. So I'm going to show you how we have it on GitHub. So we have the same project that we created on line zero. We can see the, the commit history here, which is great because you can either revert, you can see how it builds the things and then or you can clone it. So you can clone it locally. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. So basically what I did is I cloned the service, right? And you can see the code base here. You can see everything that line zero created already, right? And then we can install the dependencies and then we can run it locally. And then you have your service running and you can see how it took like just a few minutes okay. to get a fully working service. You have all your routes here. Now I won't be able to test it because I need to connect it with a database and set up everything. But basically you can see how instead of like spending a few days to set up this basic stuff, you get it running and you have a fully working service in just a few minutes.